things are better, better left unknown, and I'll never find you here, cause no one's ever, no one's ever Hole is a community-driven radio. At times the community comments may reveal prejudices and other beliefs that we or our sponsors do not condone. Views or opinions expressed by the community, callers, or guests, are those of the individual speaking and do not represent the views or opinions of this site. Rippin Common Sense content is intended for mature audiences only. Enjoy! This is My Life DIY and... Hi, this is Jojo. Hi, my name is Ash. Hey everybody, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. This is Cynthia Sue Larson. This is your man Meta, aka Propagate This Light. And you're now listening to Dark Wolf's Den. The Dark Wolf's Den Show on Rippin' Common Sense Radio. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. Are ghosts real? We had a thousand hours of continuous communication with the spirit world. 
does time travel actually exist? The laws of physics seem to be compatible with time machines. You know, sometimes I wonder about reincarnation, don't you? A four-year-old boy in Adelaide, Australia, has told his parents that he used to be Britain's Princess Diana. What would happen if the world found out that aliens were real? I didn't say disclosure would be easy, but what is the alternative? To establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. We have so many questions and yet so little time, so to have you here, the pleasure is all mine. Coming to you from a secret mountain cave, hidden deep within the Idaho wilderness, this is the Dark Wolf's Den Show. Now, here is your host, Jerry Hicks. That's right, I am Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf, and we are broadcasting live across the multiverse from a secret cave, hidden high up in the beautifully snow-covered peaks of the Idaho Mountains, that's right. We're ripping through the electromagnetic soup, tearing through the atmosphere, and tunneling away into your radio like a quantum particle. This is the Dark Wolf Stin Show for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. So whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are carrying on our journey through the secret KGB book of Alien Races. We've covered quite a bit in the last couple weeks, and make sure you go check out the first part of the series, and we're going to pick up right where we left off. But first, today in history. On this day in 1835, P.T. Barnum and his circus begins the first tour of the USA. P.T. Barnum, of course, is known for the saying, A sucker is born every minute. And that is today's... Today in history. And what an amazing quote by Mr. P.T. Barnum, right? So true. So very, very true. Speaking of quotes, as you guys know, we've added a new segment to our uh, shows each week. And uh, we've even got a new intro for it. Check it out, guys. Our new segment is called... Say what? And of course, this is a quote of the day section. And today's quote comes from actor John Grease. He says, if we descended from aliens, that is just as viable as Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, as far as I'm concerned. And that is it for today's segment of... Say what? All right, guys, I don't know about descending from aliens, though I'm not opposed to that idea, to be clear. I kind of buy into that idea. But we have been going through... A lot of different uh, information about aliens over the last, what, couple weeks now. And we're going to pick up right where we left off with this book of secret KGB book of alien races. And the next section we're going to pick up on is called the Alien Files. It says in 2003, the China National Space Administration received the reply from the Pioneer plaques sent in 1972 and 1973 aboard the Pioneer 10 and 11. Despite many requests and offers from the USA, the EU, Australia, and Russia for China to share the information on their reply, the Chinese have not done that yet. In 1985, three alien races delivered documents and video to the UN Secretary, General Javier Perez de Sular, showing evidence of several planets within the Earth's solar system that had a daily average temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, 89.6 Fahrenheit, and oceans. That sounds like quite a very comfortable uh, planet to me. It's just like Earth. 80 some odd degrees oceans it would be a uh, direct correlation to earth and this says in our solar system i don't know how much i buy that then we have case 737 from lafia nigeria in august 1957 a caucasoid woman was found near lafia 
She was not dressed matching the area nor the time period. She was taken to the local Dutch landowner and interrogated. Reports say that she claimed to be Captain Benjamin Briggs' wife, Sarah. Captain Benjamin Briggs was the captain of the Mary Celeste, a British-American merchant ship that was discovered on December 4, 1872 in the Atlantic Ocean, unmanned and apparently abandoned. She committed suicide that same night. So, was this a reptilian shapeshifter then that they were uh, interacting with? I mean, anything's possible, right? Next is, uh, the book says it's showing footprints, which don't look like any kind of footprints I've ever seen. They look pretty circular with lines through them, kind of weird, strange-looking things. Says, were stolen, the following are, oh, I'm sorry, these aren't footprints, no wonder, I misread that. The following are prints that were stolen in Sweden from APIS USSR, Alien Presence Intelligence Services, APIS by APIS USA in conjunction with another foreign special service. Six months later, these prints were, for whatever reason, attributed to an American civilian as an invention and later as a fake. These prints were, one year later, copyrighted by an unknown person. All, and all the most technological important prints were never found nor released and or revealed. The scientific data on these prints was changed also, many fake illustrations were added to the original documents. The original, stolen, had only three pages, and the fake copyrighted one had over 20. And it says the pictures in the book are supposed to be the original prints. Again, it looks like a bunch of circles with lines to them. I mean, there's really nothing spectacular here. There's uh, looks like maybe a couple blueprints of UFOs, stuff that I've seen over the internet a thousand times. I mean, I don't see anything new here. Um, we know that there are at least 2,500 alien races. That number is likely to be much higher. So CJ Henderson, another shout out to you. I remember you asking last week how many are in the book. Well, I don't know how many are in the book, but according to this line right here, it says they know that there are at least 2,500 alien races. That's a lot. That is quite a bit. I mean, for as wide as the universe is, that's a small number, but still, that's a lot of, of races. One race, a crew member of the Mazarek ship that crashed near Yekaterinburg near Svidelsky, Again, these words, my goodness, so that there are a few races that do not come to Earth because they know that the reptilians and the Maitri are here. Some of those races that avoid Earth are as violent, if not more, as the Maitri. Others are peaceful. So having the reptilians and the Maitri on Earth, it is not always a bad thing. It keeps the even worse races away. The lesser of two evils, right? The balance is found by having the Council of Five protecting us. The Mazaret crew member said the following, There are many more races that would like to protect humans, but they're not willing to start a war against reptilians or Maitri over you. End quote. In the area known as the Bermuda Triangle, there have been two permanent underwater bases for thousands of years. The first one was established by the Matrix around 3,000 years ago, while the second one has been there for over 6,000 years, and the race is unknown. Several other races have had bases there or near, but have abandoned them. It says, remember, we cooperate with the Apis, but we do not trust them or share information that is deemed confidential or top secret. We still have a very limited knowledge of activities occurring in the Bermuda Triangle area. From alien reports, we do know this. Abductions do occur in the area. Two, experimentations with humans do occur in those bases. Three, there is a multi-dimensional space portal, end quote, that goes to and from the, quote, triangle, end quote. Not exactly inside the area known as the Triangle. There is a race that is planning on building, creating a new base in the Triangle in the year 2021. Rumors say it is the Gigantic. 
it is not the most important underwater region on Earth to those alien races. There are some ships that were taken with the sole purpose, confirmed by third-party alien races, of abducting humans. Um, the crash of the Solipsy Rye ship in Roswell in July 7, 1947, had one of the most secretive APIS USA case. Has been one of the most secretive APIS USA cases. Despite our best efforts, we were never able to recover any evidence except from the top secret photos of Annex 3352-B. And it looks like a mini version of the stealth bomber. I mean, mini, mini version. There are... Okay, no, this looks like... A, okay. Yeah, that's a repeat of the same information. I don't know why they got two of the same page there. Our agents estimate that near 65% of all aliens and UFOs related websites on the internet worldwide are government or government linked, owned, and ran. In the case of the USA only websites, the number jumps to 83%, and in Europe, to 70%. In the USA, 35% of those websites are ran by the NSA, 30% by the CIA, 15% by the military, 10% by APIS USA, 5% by the FBI, and rest by unknown government agencies. In Russia, that number is closer to 33%. China, the number is around 95%. Japan, 70%. Australia, 25%. India, 55%. In Brazil, 80%. In the so-called Area 51, there are members, number unknown, of four different races forcibly cooperating with humans and reptilians. As far as we know, none of those members are either high-ranking or have a significant importance in the field of their expertise. The Maytree and humans conduct security services and support the base 24-7. There's more than one race conducting operations on the moon. Ooh, now this sounds interesting. The main race on the moon are the Indigit, the tall white. The Mythalay also have at least one base surface on what we call the dark side of Earth's satellite. Many of the Indigit human abductees are there. They end up either as slaves for mining underground or as what they call Johns and Marys by their official name, Oh, but their official name is Students M. The Students M are abductees that reveal a higher level of intelligence and are willing participants, or become that, in their agenda and plans. It is estimated that four in each ten abductees become Students M. The rest, 60%, become slaves. Some of those slaves go on to work on other planets. The Students M, after training and whatever else, return to Earth to assume leadership roles in human society. The Day Humans Killed Reptilians. Now, this sounds interesting. In 856 B.C., in the region of now Udmurtia, Russia, there, are a there was a confrontation between humans and reptilians. Reports state that a colony of reptilians were building an underground base in the area. The humans that lived in the area wrote, Thunder by day, lightning at night. The earth shakes like in the days of old again. The snakes are everywhere, flying low and causing all creatures to die. The fish are gone and the rivers dry. We must fight or we will die. A member of the Tangri Tangri, when asked by a human leader in the 20th century, if we humans would ever have a fighting chance of de at defeating the reptilians, said, Your ancestors from ancient Slave, using not much more than stones and sticks, defeated them once already. Since then you have learned much and done much, but you have lost your courage." End quote. The Tangri Tangri did say that there's a rumor that humans did not act alone against the reptilians, and they had alien race help behind the curtains. However, they also said that in the moment of battle, sp supposedly there were only humans fighting, not aliens. Either way, it shows that humans can do what humans can do and that nothing is lost. For posterity, if those humans made these works of art a reminder of a great day of their culture, one thing, though, 
The story goes that 200 years later, that culture simply vanished. Now that is intriguing. 200 years later, the culture just vanishes. The same one that defeated the reptilians. It does make you wonder if the reptilians didn't come back and get revenge, doesn't it? <laughs> Our next case file is called Day of Shame, the Tunguska Explosion. The Tunguska Incident was a powerful explosion that occurred in a desolate area near the Tunguska River in Russia on June 30th, 1908. So it had been just this month in 1908. It is commonly believed to have been caused by the explosion of a large meteoroid in Earth's atmosphere about 5 to 10 kilometers, 3 to 6 miles high. The blast flattened an estimated 60 million trees over 2,150 square kilometers. But the Tunguska explosion did not have a cosmic birth and death. Here's the version of events that led to the explosion, as told by a member of the Tangri Tangri. Five days and four nights near what you call Tunguska, the Maitri had been fighting the Dorsay. Other, plan other races were starting to choose sides and were going to get involved. Even the Council of Five was worried with the escalation and seriousness of the event. On the day of that great explosion in Elmanok, Elmanok, M-A-N-O-U-K, ship came to Earth in order to try ending the conflict. The Elmanok are respected wherever we may go. They, were, they are wise and impartial. With them came a Pleiadian ship, one of their biggest. The Maitri were warned by the reptilians of the coming presence of the Elmanok and the Pleiadians. Earlier that day, the Maitri had just shot down the last of the Dorsay ships. When the Pleiadians entered Earth's atmosphere, they were attacked by three Maitri ships and destroyed. Once Elmanuk, one Elmanuk ship was also destroyed in space that day, and that is what happened in Tunguska. And it was a pretty devastating uh, explosion. If you see the area, it literally laid full-size trees down on their side. It was absolutely gargantuan. Also, according to the Tangri Tangri, the Pleiadian ship that was destroyed that day near Tunguska was not supposed to come to Earth that day. They were going to a different destination, carrying the things they do, their holy rocks and other materials. The Elmanuk asked them to help them in solving the conflict, and they paid the price with the ending of their lives. End quote. In 2003, crystals with strange symbols, inscriptions, and holes were found in the Tunguska region. Further lab analysis showed that their composition is made of certain earth minerals, as well as some elements that are not found on earth. Note of author in Pedro. In late 2008, the crystals were presented to the media by a Russian scientist. After much, much discussion about the origin of the crystals, the matter lost interest and is supposed that the crystals now rest in a private collection. And isn't that sad? That's where most of the stuff ends up is in these private collections and we never see it again. Next we have the Choke, as aliens call them, are not an alien race is commonly accepted for many years by different apis. Aliens do not know how they evolved or where they came from. The only things we know about them are they exist in all continents, they live underground, and are mostly nocturnal. They have a structured society, leaders, and social classes. They have a cultural identity, and supposedly they can live up to 250 years. None was ever captured alive. Next, we have case 34-8-NB from Elishvisk, Russia, or Ukraine, Odessa, Ukraine. In October 2nd, 1947, a confirmed Maytree landing happened. Two days later, 12 sailors on a fishing boat disappeared. In 1982, one of the missing sailors, a Mr. Carillo, Kar in 1947, only 16 years old, showed up in Mardu, Estonia. He reported that he had been, quote, in the moon, end quote. He died in 1983 from a self-inflicted wound. On his chest, he carved with a knife the following, S.S. Waratah, 
they are still waiting. Now that's a, quite a creepy message to be carving into yourself nonetheless. Then we have case 556-9-IOP, Oregon. HMS Sickle was a submarine of the Royal Navy. In June 12 of 1944, it went missing while on patrol in northern Aegean. One member of the crew was found in 1971 near Bend, Oregon. In 1984, he became an advisor to the USA President Ronald Reagan, and he was often seen in the company of Minnesota Governor Harold Stassen. As far as we have been informed, he is still alive. List of American politicians with connections to the reptilians that have been confirmed. Now, this ought to be very interesting. Former U.S. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. Former Vice President Dick Cheney. Rumsfeld doesn't surprise me. He's got that, uh, that big company that gets a lot of governmental contracts. That doesn't surprise me at all. Former President George H.W. Bush, who also used to run the CIA. Former President George W. Bush. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. And former President Bill Clinton. And we know that some of these people did try actively to actually look into some of these uh, different files. We know that Clinton did his best to try to get information out. Uh, we know that as much as we can't stand the guy now, John Podesta was for a while fighting to uh, try to get political release in uh, uh, disclosure. And as you guys know, disclosure is supposed to be happening literally right now. That report was supposed to be released yesterday. As we know, the government does not work like that. So it will be probably a little while before we actually see this report. Uh, if anybody knows where I can find it, please drop me a message in the comment section below. I would love to see it, but something tells me they haven't officially released it because that would be huge news, even though, though it was due June 1st. We also know Barack Obama was asked about aliens on Jimmy Kimmel, to which he replied, the aliens won't let us talk. Uh, we, I don't know how true that is. We know they have a big habit of... Uh, uh, telling the truth as a joke or uh, as if it weren't true, you know. So uh, it very well could be. And uh, I'm pretty sure Trump did his best to try to look into the alien stuff. He didn't quite believe in it, but he knew there had been many, many reports. And remember, it's right after Trump's presidency that we did get this full disclosure. So as far as I'm concerned, Trump is the disclosure president. You remember in 2017, December 16th, 2017, a day I'll never forget, because it's the first time in my life I've seen a legit article about UFOs and ufology that did not have a joking X-Files uh, woo-woo tinfoil hat undertone to it. It was actually a real deal newspaper article that took a serious stance on the uh, element of ufology and the Pentagon's involvement. Ever since then, we have seen a major disclosure coming out. So uh, I cannot wait to see what we've got coming in the future. Of course, a lot of people think what the disclosure coming is going to be a red herring. And I can't disagree because I know how dirty our government is and I know how underhanded they work. So uh, I don't expect a whole, whole lot from our government, although I am uh, crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. Speaking of hoping for the best, I hope for the best for all of the families who have lost a loved one uh, in the military. You know, we just passed Memorial Day, and I hope everybody had an amazing Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I worked quite a bit and kind of got beat down this weekend but we're here we're uh talking to you guys and we're having a great time going through this book and with that said ladies and gentlemen we're going to pick up with the next part of this book and uh, it's going to be alien ships apparently so we're going to pick up with the next part about alien ships right after these messages we're going to go ahead and take a network break right here and uh we'll be right back don't you touch that dial. That's right. We gotta stoke the fires and run off the men in black. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. That howl means your weekend has begun. Hi everyone, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. Are you enjoying tonight's broadcast? The fourth part in the series KGB Book of Alien Races. 
with your host, Jerry Hicks, on the Dark Wolf Den Show. I know that I am. If you are and you haven't done so already, please make sure to thumb up that video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. You'll get our notifications every time we go live. We're here every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights, bringing you the very best of Common Sense Radio, the Rip and Rabbit Hole. Jerry will return again tomorrow night, Thursday, June 3rd. Can you believe it? It's June already, people. Oh my goodness, my oh my, how time does fly. He'll continue this series on tomorrow night, starting at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. That's Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. It truly has been a remarkable series, one that I have learned a tremendous amount of information about. Uh, And thanks to Jerry, we updated the UFO report last weekend. This weekend, however, is a first weekend. We celebrated the first Tuesday of the month in the backstage VIP chat lounge last night for Champion Sports Nation Tuesday night videos, a huge success. If you've never been a part of the backstage 24-7 VIP lounge, especially on Tuesday night videos, you are missing something really great. I encourage you to hop on over to RippinRabbitHole.com. Sign up for your exclusive backstage VIP pass. It's absolutely free to do so and always will be. It's going to give you unfiltered access down the rabbit hole where the conversation continues after the show. I'll return again Friday night, June 4th, as we explore show kids and stage moms. That's right. Come along with me down the rabbit hole and explore the venues of beauty pageants, talent shows, Show Kids and Stage Moms. The rabbit hole's going to go deep on that. Then Saturday night, June 5th, we're going to explore summertime, baby. That's right. Now that June has fully taken effect, it's summertime. Come along with me Saturday night, starting at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, as all shows do, on our journey through summertime. Think about your summertime bucket list and get it ready and then we'll end out the weekend right as we do the first sunday of every month with the fantastic fun show oh my goodness sunday june 6th will eugene make a return to family game night will he judge the competition once again Tune in to the most interactive game show on radio, the fantastic fun show, and end out the weekend right together with us. We'll return to the Dark Wolf's Den Show for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. You're listening to the Rippin' Common Sense Radio Network, the Rippin' Rabbit Hole.com. This is My Life DIY and Hi, this is Jojo. Hi, my name is I. Hey everybody, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. This is Cynthia Sue Larson. This is your man Meta, aka Propagate This Light. And you're now listening to Dark Wolf's Den. The Dark Wolf's Den Show on Rippin' Common Sense Radio. If you were meant to be controlled, you would have come with a remote, but you didn't. And that's why you listen to the Dark Wolf's Den Show. Now, here is your host, Jerry Hicks. That's right, I am Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf. And welcome back to the second half of the Dark Wolf's Den Show for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. So whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, we are continuing our journey through the secret KGB book 
of alien races. A lot of intriguing information in here. But before we carry on, I would like to stop and give a couple shout-outs real quick to a couple people. Uh, with the fantastic fun show coming up this weekend, ladies and gentlemen, do make sure you come and see if you can steal the crown from our current reigning king, Mr. Juanito1975. Shout-out to you, Juanito. Uh, good job on winning last month. Hope you, hopefully you can hold on to the crown one more round. That's right. And speaking of holding on to the crown, Earth Daughter did not hold the championship last night in the Tuesday night videos. For those that don't know, we have a very special once-a-month show, uh, trivia show backstage uh, in the 24-7 Backstage Lounge over on the RippinRabbitHole.com. That is R-I-P-O-N-R-A-B-B-I-T-H-O-L-E dot com. Over there, you're going to find our 24-7 Backstage Lounge where we do hold the Tuesday night videos hosted by Champion Sports Nation, who does an absolutely incredible job of hosting that every week. It's the Excuse me, it's not on the radio, it's not on the YouTube, the only place you can find it is in the 24-7 Backstage Lounge. And the winner last night, as I said, Miss Earth Daughter was knocked off the championship podium. The championship belt was stolen from her by Miss Sandy B. Congratulations, Sandy B., the brand new Tuesday night video champion here on the Rippin' Rabbit Hole. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with those shout-outs out of the way, once again, the Fantastic Fun Show is coming up this Sunday. If you would like to challenge Juanito 1975, make sure you tune in to Rippin' Common Sense Radio, Rippin' Rabbit Hole YouTube, and make sure you play along, uh, because you might become the new king or queen of the Fantastic Fun Show, and that lasts for one month. That's right. You'll get a picture of yourself with a crown, as well as bragging rights. That's right. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the secret KGB book of alien races. I told you we were going to pick up with the alien ships now. And uh, let's see what we've got here besides a bunch of pictures that I can't describe. If you've ever went back and looked at alien uh, photos of UFOs, then you'll pretty well know what I'm looking at here. The cigar shapes, the... Um, the round circle, uh, saucer-shaped discs, which is the majority of them. Interestingly enough, fun fact, the saucer-shaped disc was not the original UFO. Kenneth Arnold said he what he seen was more like uh, flying wings that skipped around the air like saucers skipping off of water. Thus, the flying saucer term was born by an, uh, by an editor, I think it was, that wrote that up. Uh, so that area only had pictures. I do apologize. There was no information about the actual alien ships in there. So the next section is called Alien Dixit. D-I-X-I-T. It says the following are quotes, personal messages, face-to-face, -face, and or transmissions from several alien races obtained voluntarily and or under custody and distress. So <laughs> either way, it was either voluntary or involuntary, but they got them either way. <laughs> They were obtained by several different APIS, Alien Presence Intelligence Services, from around the world, but mainly from the USSR, Russia, USA, China, and Japan. These statements do not express the opinion of all alien races on any of the mentioned issues. In fact, they differ substantially on some issues, specifically when dealing with the future of the human race. One says five universes, 2,500 species, one race. And I do believe that is the slogan for the Council of Five, if I'm not mistaken. The next quote is the violence and hatred that humans have inside themselves when compared to the violence and hatred that the race Maitri has inside themselves is like comparing a flower to a volcano. So the Maitri make us look like Boy Scouts. In 2017, you will see the beginning. In 2022, you will see the beginning of the end, unless you all change. That was another quote. Another quote says, Illuminati Pestis. Well, that's interesting. Next quote says, We have given you so much, and you have given yourselves so little. That's truth. Next, we have space and time are nothing. We are nothing. She is everything. Whoever she may be. 
the next quote says, There are 834 known species at the same level that you humans were 3,000 years ago, and they are not very far away from you. We have shown you to some of them, like we have shown some of the others to you. Now and then, and they are afraid of you, of what you have become. Next says, The signs are all around you, and above you, and inside you, in the fields, the sky, and the stars, and in the eyes of your children and your old ones. Well, that's interesting. The next quote says, Of all species we have found in three universes, you are the one with most suicidal thoughts. <laughs> I know that's not supposed to be funny. Suicide's a very serious issue, but the way that was stated I thought was pretty funny. I do apologize. Uh, next quote says, Your planet only has less than 1% of what many races that visit you want or need. But your planet is in the right place to all of them. Next is the importance that a thousand races give to you is the same that you give to one grain of sand in the desert. Your planet just happens to be in the right place, I some, sometimes the wrong place. You humans have been misled and you grew up too fast, is the next quote. The one after that says, just like you learn to love a stranger after you meet him, some of us have learned to love you. Now, that's an interesting one. Humans are an interesting uh, species, aren't we? Next quote says, We will always protect you until the day you say no more. Then it says, We cannot protect you every day. There are five known universes in five different dimensions to protect. Now, that's interesting, too. Five dimensions and five universes. That's the first I've heard that one. So anybody wondering how many universes there are, there you go. I think there's a lot more myself. No other race ridicules other races and each other like yours do. <laughs> uh, of course, speaking of humans, the next quote says, Soon one year will feel like one million to you. I'll be telling you what, ladies and gentlemen, ten minutes feels like a year to me sometimes. And in Greece, you will find yours and ours past. Interesting, I wonder what Greece holds. Next says, We, the Matri, will be the new she. Huh, interesting. Next says, You believe in many things that you do not see, except for the only thing you do not see but should believe in, and it has always been all around you. You just chose to forget it. Of course, I don't know exactly what they were referencing there. Next says, There is much worse than the race Matri. We know it. We have seen them, and we have seen what they have done, and they know about you humans. That's scary. That is really, really scary. Next is, there are so many of ours in you. Huh, that's interesting. Then it says, there are many of us that you adore in places that you adore, and in places that you hate. Next says, we could stop your sun from rising tomorrow. That's another scary one. The next quote says, 500 years and you are still lying to each other. I think we've been lying to each other a lot longer than 500 years. I'm just saying. Next says, soon this dream of yours will end. Well, I don't know how true that is. Next quote says, you have lost a thousand years in the past 50 years. Now that I believe. Next says, if you go to Mars, Mars will come to you. That is what they do. I have no idea what that means. Next says, your children that now live inside the moon do not miss you anymore. Now, again, that's intriguing. If you heard the episode a week or two ago when I spoke of John Lear, uh, the son of the guy that created the Lear Jet, a genius in his own right, who speaks about uh, his own family, children and his family reporting that they went to the moon and uh, had lessons. So that's interesting. Next says, thousands of your children go missing every year, never to be found again. And yet you still expect your television to save them when inside of you, you already know the answer. That is extremely scary. Next says, Reptilians and Matri killed him with your help. I don't know who that was referencing. The next says, Innocent secret sex and malevolent secret sex, and you adore them both. She is not inside of you anymore. And I don't know who this she that they keep referencing is. I find that interesting, the female reference constantly. 
The next says, we have died for you, and still you fear us. Next says, why threatening us? Why threatening us if we came to you offering you long life? Next quote says, you kill each other every day in the name of saving each other. And you have been doing that since before we talked to you. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing that a lot. We still do that. If you look around common things going on right now, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Jab, jab, jab. The Anunnaki created you once is the next quote. They will not create you again. We will destroy you in the Anunnaki, and the time is near. Something tells me that's a quote from the Matry. I don't know specifically, but that sounds like the Matry. Next quote says, eight years in one day. Eight years in one day. Eight years in one day. Now, I have no idea what that means. That sounds like some time travel stuff. Next says, almost all races went to war, but not with themselves, unlike humans. The next quote says, your modern gods are confused. Your ancient gods are forgotten. And that is so, so very true. The next quote says, look at the stars and you will see us every day looking at you. Funny, because I look at the stars every day and I'm yet to see these guys. Maybe I need a better set of binoculars. I don't know. Or a set of binoculars at all, right? <laughs> you know what I really want? Off topic. But I really want a set of those uh, night vision goggles. I hear you can see quite a bit in the sky at night with those. Next quote says, If you look too far, you will see something that you do not want to. I think that's good advice for life, right? If you look too far, you're going to see something that you do not want to. Next section here is called the Notes and Updates. You know what, guys? We might not have enough material for tomorrow night's show. We might have to do a different topic tomorrow night. So don't be surprised if tomorrow night's show is not the secret book of alien races. The Kurs showed up again, Washington, D.C. The Kurs are not supposed to be here. What is going on? Pleiadians and Bora Bora, Apis, Russia, and USA ignored them. Again. Why did the Matry accept guilt for 2000? More planes are being ready for 2017. Bush will do what Bush is told, like the ones before him. Three more economies destroyed. Why don't people see it? In August 2013, USA, try Alfalfa Market Road in Oregon. Want to see? Watch 54.7371 degrees north, 55.9667 degrees east, August 27th. And I do not know what those coordinates lead to. JFK had DNA for the first race, from the first race, called Yakim 3. Why did those choose Putin to start the avalanche? The black will be white and the yellow will be red. Note from author and Petro. There are some of the handwritten notes and updates found on the Alien Races book pages. There are literally hundreds of them, about three or four in each page. We chose, chose the ones that we deemed more relevant. Otherwise, this publication would have thousands of pages. We may one day publish all the notes. As Napoleon, Alexander, and Hitler did, so will the rest. How blind are people that they cannot see what is in the Grand Canyon? Connect London, Berlin, and Cairo. Two kilometers south from the Vatican. Small pink house, always for rent, never rented. They keep it there. Corolla dos temporales. Why do Australian humans do not see September 23? Caravaggio has it. The Pope and Castro met again last week with Maitri. The states are losing ground now. Funny, P Putin musing Med Medvedev in front of everyone. <laughs> Ever since humans and aliens started cohabiting Earth, the main question humans wanted answered was, who created the universe and all of us? The question has been answered the same exact way by all alien races that have spoke about it. The answer to that question has been several times 
by two different races to all human religions leaders throughout the centuries? The answer to that question has been sent several times by two different races to some human political leaders throughout the centuries. As far as we know, the last of those leaders was the message to President JFK in the USA on October 3rd, 1963. The message is both simple and complex, informative but raising questions of hope but also of warning. And this is the message. This is a message of disambiguation to all of you men of the humankind. This is a message of redirection to all of you men of the humankind. This is a message to enliven the minds of you men of the humankind. This is a message that has been delivered from race to race since the beginning. Just like it was delivered to us, it is now passed to you. Where there are where there were no men of the humankind, there were others of other kind. This is a message to you as well, women of humankind. Only the first race has her purity. All other races li must live the grievous, patient, and laborious process of spiritual inner discovery and progression. Your, our, collective history and memory has suffered much in the past. It has been erased, manipulated, suffocated, shifted, changed, and molded according to the interest of a few. On your planet as well as on ours and ones of other kinds in the past. To the leaders of kingdoms and countries and regions, look at your religious leaders. To the religious leaders, look at yourselves and the ones like you, leaders of other religions all over your planet. Why do you wear your long robes and skirts and all manners of symbols that you do not understand? Why do you, religious leaders, men of humankind, wear your long robes and skirts not knowing why? Who, men of humankind, are you trying to be? Who, men of humankind, are you trying to represent? Your religious men of humankind and you, leaders of kingdoms and countries and regions, men of humankind, have slowed your spiritual progress in half because you have divided your kind in half. No men of the humankind should destroy what the women of the humankind have created. You have for many of your years re relegated the women of humankind into the role of slaves. And before your kind, many other kinds have done that. And before your kind, men of the humankind, men of other kinds, we have warned. For you to achieve what is yours, for you, men and women of the humankind, to be closer to her, you must first become one kind. Like many kinds before you, men and women of the humankind, you have a journey of restraint and constriction ahead of you, a journey of difficulty and resistance. But unlike many kind before yours, you are on a path of spiritual self-destruction never experienced or self-provoked by other kinds before. And yet you are so young. The Anunnaki created you, but many kinds can destroy you. You have 2,000 more of your years to change. After that, men of the humankind, it will be too late. Not too late for your survival, but too late for your salvation, your spiritual salvation. The Council of Five can only keep you safe from other kinds, not from yourself. And we know that you have been betrayed, misled, and mistreated. We know that after thousands of your years, by means of infiltration, disguisement, and deceit, you, men of the humankind, have been fooled to believe the unaccepted by human races, unacceptable by races that do not wish you well. But before you, many other kinds suffered the same, and they too overcome the what seemed impossible to overcome. Your strength is inside of you and all around you, even now. Your strength is in her, and she is inside you, men and women of the humankind, even now. And the answer is in the place that you, humankind, call Greece. And the answer is she, Artemis, Diana. And the answer have always been her. And the answer, men and women of the humankind, have been the same to all kinds, in all places. Some accept it, others don't. But the answer is only one, she. It has been this way from the beginning, and it will be this way, men and women, from the humankind until the end. It has been this way, and in all four universes and dimensions. She has many names and many faces and lives in many places. She is the creator, not the destroyer. In your planet, she was, was and is called Diana, or Goddess Diana. In other planets, she is called Elixie. 
She is also called on other planets Lexe, Lixe, Dixe, and Tixe. To you of the humankind, she will be Goddess Diana. Search for her, learn of and from her. She is the truth, the light, the beginning, but never the end, the creator and never the destroyer, the one of all of us came from. And learn from your legendary Greek gods of old, as they all did exist, as you exist and we exist, and we are one, and she is the one. She is the one that you, religious men from the humankind, lost in your robes and memory, want to be and try to replicate. Men and men of the humankind, learn from her, the Creator. And that's going to do it for the Book of Alien Races. I'm sorry, the Secret KGB Book of Alien Races. What do you guys think? Have you enjoyed this series? I know I've had a blast doing it. It has been lots and lots of fun, and I've learned quite a bit. I don't know about you guys. But what do you guys think? Do you think that the book is full of truth? Do you think it's really telling us what is uh, going on with the Brotherhood of Aliens that apparently exist all around the universe, the 2,500 plus species? Or do you think it's just another work of fiction? In the end, ladies and gentlemen, all you can do is look at the evidence, apply a little common sense, and you be the judge. We got to close it out. That's right. That's it for this episode of the Dark Wolf Stin Show for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. So whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the den may be closing, but don't you worry. The weekend fun has only just begun. That's right. We will be back tomorrow, Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, for an all-new episode of the Dark Wolf's Den Show. That's right. Tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about... I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. I thought we were going to be finishing this book of uh, aliens, but apparently we've already finished it. So uh, we will have a surprise topic tomorrow night. Then on Friday... June 4th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. All shows here on the network start at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. On Friday, AJ the Rippin' Rabbit returns for an all-new episode of the Rippin' Rabbit Hole Live Show. That's right. On Friday, he's going to be talking about show kids and stage parents. This is a world all unto itself, and not one that I 100% agree with myself. But let's hear what AJ's got to say about it on Friday, June 4th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. Under Rippin' Rabbit Hole YouTube, as well as RippinRabbitHole.com and Rippin' Common Sense Radio. Then on Saturday, June 4th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9, June 5th, 2021, I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, AJ the Rippin' Rabbit comes back for another episode of the Rippin' Rabbit Hole Live Show. This go-round, he's going to be talking about summertime, my personal favorite time of the year. I love the summertime. Uh, I don't like the heat, but I love the ability to get out and about more and uh, a lot more events and fun things to do. Summertime's a great time, and AJ's going to be talking about such a great time on Saturday, June the 5th, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. Then on Sunday, June 6, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, come back for the best fun you can have on radio. That's right. It is our fantastic fun show for the month of June. As we know, Juanito 1975 right now wears that crown and sits on that throne, but maybe you can knock him off. All you got to do is come by on Sunday, June 6, 2021, to the Rippin' Rabbit Hole YouTube, Rippin' Common Sense Radio, and play along with us and see if you can dethrone Juanito 1975. That's right, it's an interactive game show, trivia, uh, all kind of fun little riddles and just you name it is lots of fun and uh, a good time is had by all and that ladies and gentlemen will be the fantastic fun show on sunday june 6 2021 7 p.m pacific 10 9 central right here on rippin common sense radio rippin rabbit 
Speaking of the Riffin Rabbit Hole.com, that is R I P O N R A B B I T H O L E dot com. That's right. Over there, you're going to find the 24 7 Backstage Lounge, my favorite hangout, where I'm going to be right after the show. But in order to come back and hang out with us, you are going to have to sign up for the Backstage Pass. It is absolutely free. It is going to give you access to all of the amazing goodies we offer over on the RiffinRabbitHole.com. Besides the 24-7 Backstage Lounge, we've also got the Groups area over there. A bunch of amazing different groups to choose from, from the Rippin' Rabbit Hole group to the Dark Wolf's Den show, as well as Lucid Dreaming and a number of other amazing topics. So whatever you're into, make sure you come over and drop us a line. That's right. Also, ladies and gentlemen, while you're on the RiffinRabbitHole.com, make sure you drop down the rabbit hole, our exclusive version of social media. Uh, you're going to find a lot of interesting fun over there, a lot of uh, facts, a lot of rabbits over there conversing and sharing the stuff they're finding across the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go over right now to the 24-7 Backstage Lounge, and I can't wait to see you guys over there here in just a couple minutes. It is an honor and a pleasure to do these shows for you guys every week, and I cannot believe I've been given such an amazing opportunity, and I thank every last one of you guys for being here every week. You guys make the show. Make sure you drop down and hit us uh, up on the subscribe button, hit that like button, ring that bell, and then go over to the Rippin' Rabbit Hole on YouTube and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, and uh, make sure you check us out every Wednesday and Thursday. If you would like to donate to our cause, ladies and gentlemen, there are links down in the description box below. Uh, We do accept PayPal as well as cryptocurrency, and I'll have a couple addresses for that on the Dark Wolf's Din Show channel uh, subscription, or the details box down below. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerry Hicks, and on behalf of AJ the Rippin' Rabbit, Chick Mandela Effect, Michael Musco, Tom Bayless and Red Shed Studios. Get it, Tom. Tom knows how to rock it. That's right. And everybody involved in ripping Common Sense Radio, we thank you for being here. And remember, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay awake, but dare to dream. Good night, everybody. How? Yeah. That's right. Things are better, better left unknown And I'll never find you here Cause no one's ever, no one's ever
just illusion, manifestation or a dark delusion? Is this real or just illusion?